Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, set thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, thy king cometh, sitting on a donkey's colt. These things understood not his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. 17 says, the people therefore that was with him when he called Lazarus out of his grave and raised him from the dead bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for they had heard that he had done this miracle. Turning over to verse 37 of the same chapter, it says, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Verses 42 and 43, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Wow. This morning, I'm going to do my very best to preach to us from a message entitled simply, is your praise perfected or perverted? Is your praise perfected or perverted? Is your praise perfected or perverted? Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you now for where you're going to take us in your word today. We thank you because you are a God that always illuminates your word to us. And because of that, we thank you. We thank you for revealing to us the hidden mysteries of the gospel today, that your people would be edified by the word of God and to be challenged to stay the course for a perfected praise. We're asking now for the Holy Spirit who is the teacher to come and to minister to our hearts, give us supernatural recall of your word, bring back every thought, every illustration, every example. And I'm even open to new stuff while it is that we're delivering the gospel today. Do it for your glory. God, that you would get the praise and the honor out of this. Hide me behind Calvary's cross that your word is delivered and your people only see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we identify the time uh, of this particular text, Deacon is Black, it is in fact the time where Jesus understands that he's on his way to be crucified. He understands that uh, after he's gone through this last three to uh, two and a half to possibly three years at this time, he's gone through all of the challenges and all of the things that were surrounding his ministry. He had endured uh, the naysayers. He had endured the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And he knew that this was the period in which things were to culminate. And so as he's preparing Deacon is Black to go uh, into the most trying and difficult week of his life, he is introduced or welcomed by a great multitude of people who caught wind that Jesus was coming to town. As Jesus is approaching to come to Jerusalem, the Bible says, as you heard this morning, they took, they took branches off of palm trees. And in one context of the scripture, it says that they shrewd the branches off and they begin to lay the palms in the path of Jesus. One text says that they lay not only the path, of, not only the path was laid with palms, but also with their clothes. They were laying Minister Black or preparing a way for Jesus to enter into Jerusalem. And as it is that Jesus is entering into Jerusalem, Jesus begins to uh, ride on uh, a donkey's colt. All right, let, let me bring a little bit of understanding. I'm doing a little teaching here before the preacher shows up. Uh, it is understood that in ancient times, when a king was to come into a land, the type of animal he rode on signified what his mission was. If, in fact, he was riding on a humble animal, like unto a donkey, this was simply a mission of peace. This was a mission that says, I'm coming not to be disruptive, but I'm coming to ensure the peace of the town. If, in fact, he would have been riding on a horse, it would be a mission of battle, which is saying that he's coming now not for peace, but he's coming for war. 
It was very necessary to note that the animal Jesus chose was in fact Brother Foster, an animal that had never been ridden before. Uh, the understanding is when an untrained animal receives the weight of the glory of Jesus, the untrained animal will act according to what he was trained or what he should have been trained to do. Let me bring some understanding. Uh, Minister Black, if in fact um, somebody comes in off the street. Yes, sir. Uh, they don't know nothing about church at all. Uh, but yet, the weight of the glory sits on them. You'll find that the man that knows nothing about God or nothing about church, when the weight of glory hits him, he'll perform as if he had been trained. Wow. So, so, so Jesus says, in order to signify not only that I'm a king coming in peace, I'm coming to show you that the weight of my glory can change the unchangeable. Mm. Oh, God, I thought somebody might have caught that already. Yeah. That the weight of my glory has the ability to change the unchangeable. Yeah. So the one that you thought could never be delivered, all he needs to do is come in contact with the weight of his glory. Yes, and his life will be transformed in a moment. Yeah. So Jesus said, I want to take something that's never been written on before. Check this out. Something that's never been contaminated by man before. And I'm going to take him in his untrained state and I'm going to train him to be what I want him to be. Oh, I get excited when I think about what God can do with somebody who's been untrained. I get excited when I think about what God can do through somebody who has not been filled with the dirt of humanity. Help me today, Jesus. Who has not been filled with uh, the, 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 the crud. That's the best word I got. The crud of religion. Uh, that, that has thrown you into a box and say, this is how church supposed to look. This is how you're supposed to act. And whenever I've been trained, I limit myself from being free unto God. Yes. So he says, I take the things that are untrained, put my weight on them, and they'll act the way I want them to act, not the way society tells them to act. That was just a little point I wanted to give you. Uh, the, 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 the thing I want us to understand is this. I want you to kind of just write down uh, these cross references because you got to get the cross reference in order to understand what it is I'm here to talk about today. Uh, this story is written in all four of the Gospels. Uh, in Matthew, it's in Matthew chapter 21, where in fact we see uh, the entry in, of Jesus coming in. The same story we're telling you today is in Matthew 21. It's also in Mark chapter 11. Uh, uh, it's also in Luke chapter 19, where it gives us the three various points of view as it relates to Jesus being entered into Jerusalem. So Minister Black, they, they've already made a decision that they're going to come. The multitudes are coming because they heard that Jesus had in fact raised Lazarus from the dead. It was the miracle that Jesus worked that drew the crowd. So when the crowd came, they came not because they were necessarily trusting or believing who Jesus was. They came based on the word of another person. Ah, uh, uh, okay. Uh, when, when my testimony is strong enough, my testimony will influence somebody to give Jesus a chance. Wow. If my testimony is strong enough, it will influence others that even if I don't necessarily believe, necessarily believe him, I'll at least come see about him. Right. Right. So the people came to Evangelist Graham not because they really wanted to change, but they came hoping that maybe I too can see a miracle. They came saying, well, maybe I too can experience his hand. And what happens is as they get to the, to the place where Jesus is, fact, they all begin to cry out. Even the ones that believed and the ones that didn't believe, they begin to cry out, Hosanna. <laughs> they begin to say, Hosanna. That word in the Hebrew uh, actually means, oh, save now. Uh, Hosanna. Oh, save now. Blessed be the Lord. Uh, blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So they begin to exclaim that Jesus was, in fact, the Savior. They exclaimed it, but they didn't believe it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are people in the church, and, and, and I don't think it's better to the fake church, but it's people in the church at large that are exclaiming him, but not believing him. Mm. They are, in fact, extolling him, but not trusting him. Yeah. They are, in fact, praising him, but not following him. Yeah. I would much rather, check this out, 
be a true follower of Christ because the following nature of me will lead me to be a true praiser. Mm, that's good. It is possible for me to be a praiser without being a follower, but it's impossible to be a follower without being a praiser. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the people come, and this is black, and I'm, I'm going I'm to let this thing make sense now. The, the people come, and they begin to praise the name of the Lord. They praise us the bought night one that they didn't believe or trust. They were praising because other people were praising. Mm -hmm. The first thing we must understand, to understand or to know if our praise is in fact perfected or perverted, is that we must, one, put our praise in proper perspective. A lot of peas this morning. We must put our praise in proper perspective. When in fact I'm putting something in its proper perspective, it means that I'm doing what I'm doing, not because somebody else did it or because somebody else said it, I'm doing it because I believe it. Yeah. Let, let me help us today. Uh, in the church, and we, we, read, we read the verse this morning intentionally out of Psalm 150, uh, and it's very accurate where it says, in, specifically in the sixth verse, to let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Which means that as long as I'm created, as Evangelist Graham said, and it was so true, whether I'm saved or not, it's required of me to praise the Lord. Hey. Now, the problem is the unsaved praiser, his praise can never truly be perfected. His praise will always be perverted. Because he does not have a real understanding of who it is that God is in his life, he has the propensity to praise, but not the understanding of what he's praising. He has the ability to praise because he has breath, but he doesn't have the capacity to praise because he can't see. Mm. Uh, help me today, Jesus. Uh, Good, when in fact, uh, we're false stuff, I am a perverted praiser, that means that I'm simply praising as if I was a chameleon. I'm praising because I'm able to fit in with the environment, but not be separated from my own environment. I'm able to praise in an atmosphere that's conducive because I can look like a praiser even when I'm really a pervert. Help me with my Jesus. Uh, uh, the, 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 word, the word, Sister Misha, uh, perverted, if we look at it in its Greek term, and this, this is going to help us, the word perverted is the word uh, apos, apostrepho. Apostrepho is spelled A-P-O-S. A-P-O-S. T-R-E-P-H-O, apostrepho, apostrepho, A-P-O-S-T-R-E-P-H-O. Apostrepho means, in fact, to turn away from or to turn aside. Pervert, to turn away from or to turn aside. So when one has been perverted in their mind, it means that their mind has been turned away from truth and turned aside to garbage. It's been turned away from what it once said and now turned aside to something completely different. My praise becomes perverted when I only can praise God in the presence of others. Mm. My praise becomes perverted when I only praise him, Sister Bob Knight, because the worship leader told me to. Yeah. My praise becomes perverted when I only praise God when he does good for me. God says a perfected praiser is willing and capable, Sister Lipscomb, of praising me when things look the exact opposite of what I say. A perfected praiser is able to praise me while I'm in pain. A perfected praiser is able to give me glory yes. when it looks like my glory just left you. Oh. A perfected praiser is able to look beyond what it is that they're going through and still understand that I've got a lot to be thankful for. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So Sister Foster, that means no matter what it is I'm going through, no matter how bad I may feel, no matter how bad I may look, no matter how jacked up I still may be, I understand that in order for my praise to be perfected, I've got to be willing to thank him when I don't feel like it. That's good. A perfected praiser says that even in the face of my enemy, I'll still praise God. Pastor, where are you getting this from today? Thank you for asking me. If you look in Matthew chapter 21, 
when it is, and you can turn to it. I, I, I got it in my mind, but you can have it in front of you if you need to see it. Uh, when you look at Matthew chapter 21, we begin to identify here that this is the same story that Jesus has come into the land of Jerusalem. He's coming to Jerusalem. They've hailed him as being king. They've laid palms out. They've praised him. They've worshipped him. And then when you get to the 12th verse of Matthew chapter 21, we see that Jesus Evangelist Graham goes from hearing the praises of the people to getting to the church and cleaning things out. Let, let, me, let, me, let me make sure we, we, we follow it this morning. Uh, Jesus said, I understand you praised me, but now I got to come to the church to make sure the church is clean. All right. Um, I understand that you praised me outside of the church, but now I got to come to the church to show you that in that sense, your praise really may not have been perfected. Wow. Because when I come into the church, the place where praise is supposed to be at its best is the place I got to actually clean up. Oh, help me today, Jesus. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying, Sister Misha, that even us as the church have got some areas in our life, ouch, Pastor, that the Lord says, I got to clean up before I can let your praise be perfected. There's some stuff you're still holding on to that I got to clean out of you before your praise can be perfected. I need you to understand that the people on the outside, the, the Christians, minister black, on the outside that were out in the streets witnessing and telling others about the goodness of the Lord Jesus Christ, they attracted folk to come in. And when the people came, they praised God. They were excited. They were dancing. But Jesus said, put that on hold until I get the temple correct. So Jesus comes into the temple. He comes to the temple. And while he's in the temple, temple cleaning things up minister black we find in the 15th verse that the people start kicking up again a chorus of hosanna uh, help, help, help me today jesus they, they were saying hosanna in a dirty place after it is that jesus cleaned it their hosanna was now perfected god uh, help me when, when they were on the outside somebody's catching me today when they were on the outside in a perverted place their praise was tainted but when jesus into the house, bro Foster, and he began to clean things up. He began to establish order in the church. Yeah. And after order was established, the praise kicked back up. And Jesus yeah. says, don't you know that the Bible says that out of the mouth and veins and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. He said, praise couldn't be perfected until I cleaned up your mess. Mm. Yeah. Mm. 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 So I'm coming to church I'm faithful in tithes. I'm faithful in offering. I'm, I'm blessing God's name. But he said the whole time it was perverted. He said I have to clean out the mess in your life before I can take that same praise, those same words, and change them from perverted to perfected. Mm. It was in the 16th verse. Uh, in the 20, 21 Matthew 21 16 where Jesus says again I have you not read out of the scriptures where it says uh, that out of the mouth of babes and suckling, suckling thou has in fact perfected praise the interesting part to note is Jesus quotes a scripture out of Psalm uh, number 8 verse 2 uh, where it is that Jesus gives that parallel in Psalm 8 and 2 the scripture says it this way it says uh, uh, but out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou has ordained strength because of thine enemies that he may steal the avenger and the enemy. Now, Jesus Evangelist Graham called perfected praise what David called ordained strength. Jesus calls perfected praise what David called ordained strength. I said that praise has to be in the proper perspective in order for it to be perfected. What does that mean? That means that there is an accompanying strength that comes with a perfected praise. There is, Sister Akasha, an accompanying strength that comes with perfected praise. What do you mean, Pastor? The strength of perfected praise means that when it seems like I should be crying, I'm still dancing. Yeah. The strength of a perfected praise means that even when I want to say, God, why, I start saying, God, thanks. Yeah. A perfected praise 
has a strength that says, when I want to say, God, I don't understand, I say, God, it's still working out for my good. Because a perfected praise is the ordaining of my strength. I need somebody to get to that. The Bible says that when it is that I am weak, that is when he is made strong. So I see his strength perfected in my weakness. I feel the preacher now. So when it is that I want to throw in the towel, Sister Lipscomb, when it is that I want to quit on God just for a moment, when it is that I might want to just turn away for a second, that's when perfected Glory. praise starts knocking or gain strength. Glory. So David said, when it is that you wanted to turn yes. away, he said this way, well, I almost slipped oh. unless I begin to realize the mercy and the grace of the Lord. My God, that my is God. a perfected praise that comes with my strength. My God, my God. Yes. So when I lost a loved one, help me, Jesus, I might have cried for a moment, but in the midst of my tears, there was, in fact, an ordained strength. Glory. Because I learned how to praise him when I don't feel like praising him. Yes. Strength kicks in, and it lets my praise go from a perverted place to a perfected place. My God from Zion. I'm preaching real good today. Yes. Uh, so we identify that praise robot night has to be put in its proper perspective. The proper perspective means this, Minister Black. Yes, In order for me to have a perfected praise, mm. I've got to have an enemy. Mm. Oh, God, I hope you wrote that down. In order for me to have a perfected praise, I've got to have an enemy. Oh, God, I hear you today. He says in Psalm 23 and 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Why is that necessary? God says, in order for your praise to get to the next level in me, there has to be the presence of an enemy. Uh, and I just gave you Psalm 8 and 2 where he says, Out of the mouth of me and suffer, y'all, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies. And he didn't just leave it there. He says, so that he may steal the enemy and the avenger. avenger. So, so, the false, so that means that God has to put me in situations sometimes where it looks like the enemy got the best of me. Yeah. He has to put me in a situation sometimes that it looks like I lost just so he can show me that I'm still winning. Yeah. But without the presence of an enemy, yeah. my praise can never get to a place Come on, of pastor. perfection. Pastor, yeah. you keep talking about perfect praise. What do you mean by that? Well, the word perfect simply it means to be complete. The word perfect, check this out, simply means to mature. So God says there's an elevation I'm looking for in your praise that goes from just you thanking me based on what I've done to now you thanking me for the unknown that I'm doing. Wow. A perfected praise says I'm not just thanking him for waking me up this morning anymore. I'm thanking him for what I don't see him doing three years from now. I'm not just thanking him that he started me on my way, but I'm thanking him that he Block death from visiting me oh. when it should have taken me out of you. I'm not just thankful for the activity of my limbs anymore, but I'm thankful for the unseen, Sister Misha, that he kept me from the danger I didn't know about. He says a perfected praise is elevated to where you can't see. And so a lot of us with our sanctified self have been praising God on a surface level. We've been praising him based on the tangible. And he says that tangible praise has the ability to be perverted. But the intangible, when you praise me for the thing you can't see, when you praise me for the thing you don't understand, when you praise me when it looked like I didn't make a way, he said that praise is so perfected that the intangible cannot be perverted. Ah. Mm -hmm. Oh God, this, this, this is good. I need about 80 people here today to really catch it. The first thing I gave you was that praise has to be in a proper perspective. The next thing I got to give you is this point number two. Is that uh, when my praise is perfected, my private and my public praise match. Yeah. Wow. That's good. This is good. God, I fill up the day. It's yeah. good. Ah, a perfected praiser wow. has a matching private and public praise yes. while the perverted praiser has a private and public mismatch wow. yeah i feel i feel yeah. sweaty so let me just take this off so that i can still talk when i leave here today amen oh. uh, when i'm a perfected praiser for foster that means the same way 
I praise God in front of you. Yes. yes. I praise him when you're not around. That's good. Uh, the, the, the same way my hands are lifted yes. on Sunday morning. My hand is lifted on Thursday evening. Uh, the same way there's a hallelujah on Sunday, there's a, a, a resounding hallelujah on Friday evening. When my praise is perfected, it is not subject to my environment. It supersedes my environment. A perfected praiser sometimes has to go to the bathroom at work. Because I know I just picked somebody up because there's just so much on the inside that I've got to tell them thank you, but I still want to be in order where I am. So because I understand the order of my office is, and I might not be able to lift my hands in front of the students, I find my way to my private bathroom. And I can tell God thank you in the midst of what's going on in Time Warner Cable. I can tell God thank you in the midst of what's going on at Rowan Cabarrus College. I can tell God thank you in the midst of what's going on at Sterling Elementary School. I learned that I can praise him because my praise has been perfected. So he says when your praise is perfected, you look the same at home that you do at church. Y'all ain't feeling me. Uh, there, there, there's a sad, it's a sad commentary for a person to be a deacon at church and a devil at home. It's a sad commentary for a person to be a missionary at church and a misery at home. It's a problem if a person is a pastor in a church but pathetic at home. There has to be a public and a private match when it is that my praise is perfected. I think this is the reality of the minister black. I'm Pastor Hinton whether I'm in Bethel Temple Faith Church or whether I'm in uh, Bank of America. I'm Pastor Hinton whether I'm in the Hyundai Sonata or I'm in the 2016 Escalade. Y'all ain't feeling yes, I'm Go still ahead. pastor because I'm I, my praise has been perfected to a place that no matter where I am, my soul is always going to make its boast in the Lord. Yes, it doesn't matter if I'm in the church house or if I'm in the jail house. I'm still praising his name. Yes. It doesn't matter if I'm at the church picnic or if I'm at the family reunion. I'm still praising his name. Yes. When I'm drinking water here, I'm drinking water at the family reunion. Yes. It's a sad thing to drink water at the church but drink a beer at the cookout. Uh oh. Right Help me to dig Jesus. Right Jesus, I hope Jesus, somebody Jesus. told me, even if it's over the airways, I just want to do it, Jesus. That it ought not be a mismatch in my life. That I'm talking very pure in church, but I'm cussing you out around my co workers. It ought not be like that because when in fact there is a mismatch in your public and private, just know you are a perverted priest. Right Woo! My God designed. Mm. Amen. Heavy. Amen. Heavy. God says, I would much rather. Oh God, let, 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 let me go this way before I turn around this corner and sit down. It, it, it's in Luke chapter 19. I told you you got to look at all the contexts. It's in Luke chapter 19, Mr. Black, mm -hmm. uh, that the perfected praisers begin to be challenged by their enemy. Uh, it in fact was in Luke chapter 19, around about verse 40. Uh, it is in the 39th verse of Luke chapter 19 that the Pharisees begin to say to Jesus, Jesus, why don't you silence your praisers? Mm. Jesus, why don't you silence the ones that you just perfected? Jesus says, you don't really get it. That when praise has been perfected, it has to come out. Yeah. Mm. Help me here. Yeah. Uh, that, that when praise has been perfected, that means it can no longer be contained. Yeah. That's how you know if you're perfected praise or not. If there's never been an instance in your life where you had the I can't help it, yeah. just maybe your praise had not been perfected yet. Because a perfected praise cannot be silenced. So Jesus Jesus said, I need you to understand that the praise around me is so heavy that if they did be quiet, the rocks would begin to cry out. I need you to understand that a perfected praise is so powerful that inanimate objects will praise God. The perfected praise is so powerful that if you decided to not praise him, Deacon is black, you'll find King saying thank you, Jesus. Y'all ain't feeling me. If you decided, Sister Lipscomb, to not praise God, if you had a goldfish, you hear him utter a word that said, thank you, Jesus. Because once praise has been perfected in my life, God says, even if you get that I can't help it and you try to shut it up, I'll call stuff that don't have breath to praise me on your behalf. And I don't know about anybody else, but evangelists in the back, I will not allow a rock to ever cry out on my behalf. I'll never allow an inanimate object, an inhumane object, an object with no voice or breath to have to praise God for me. You wonder why storms have to come sometimes. God 